Hello, I'm Marilyn Hall. Welcome to part three of Making a Dirndl. Today we're going to do the back of the bodice, which might not sound that exciting, but we're going to have fun. I'm going to show you how to put rickrack in the little A-line seams back there, and it's going to look really in nice. The dress I'm sewing today, there are two back bodice pieces, the center back and the side back. The center back is placed on a fold of fabric, and you cut one of them for the bodice and one for the lining. And the side back, you cut two for the bodice and two for the lining. There are endless ways to add some fun to the back of your dirndl. Today I've decided to sew some black rickrack to the bottom edge of the center back. I'm going to show you a couple other dirndls so you can get some ideas of other ways you might like to finish off yours. Whatever you decide, just really take your time and line it up exactly along your seam edge so you'll get a nice even piping, rickrack, or whatever you're going to do so it doesn't look uneven. Sometimes I use piping. This one has shiny silver and black upholstery trim that I sewed on after the seam was sewn. Sometimes I use rickrack, and it's okay sometimes to sew the seams with no piping at all. Because I'm going to finish off the neckline, which is up here, and the armholes with double fold bias tape, I've removed all of this extra seam allowance that I would have left if I was doing piping. So my uh, back pieces are cut a little bit narrow and the same for this side back here. This piece is removed. So if you're going to do piping you want to leave this seam allowance on. If you're going to do double fold bias tape you can cut yours a little more uh, narrow. This is the back center back piece and I decided that it might be nice to uh, sew this rickrack along here and then I'll attach the side back pieces and it'll kind of mirror what's happening in the front. I think that'll be fun. I did a combination of taping and pinning um, this rickrack onto the lower seam edges of the center back and that works out pretty good as you go around the corner and I measured it to make sure that the center of the rickrack will always be a half inch because that's what my seam allowance is. Now that I've finished sewing the rickrack onto this lower edge I'm going to pin these side pieces on and, and this is something that you have to do really slowly and carefully to make sure everything matches up. So I'm going to do that now and it's always a little tricky. I'm going to start at the bottom here, pinning it, and the bottom here so that it all comes out even at the bottom. Okay, When I got to pinning this piece on, because it curves in opposite directions, it was really hard to round the corner so I went around and I went ahead and snipped into this a little bit. Uh, to help it to be more flexible with that rickrack and the starch I put on the fabric it's hard to make it lay down and go around this corner so that really helped a little bit to, for the pinning. What it looked like after I finished sewing it. The other side that had to kind of manage it go around the corner um, it was really helpful that I did that little trimming. When you finish sewing your side back pieces to your center back you must not skip this next step or your bodice will never lay down right. You need to take your scissors and snip the, sel the seam allowance like this all the way up to the stitching but don't go through the stitching. And this will help it to lay down flat. If you don't do this, you will regret it when you go to iron it and you wonder why it's not laying down. So it needs to look kind of like this. And since I have the rickrack in there, I've been kind of careful to snip between the little peaks of the rickrack and it's really helpful to do that and do this and then iron it down and I ironed mine towards the center middle like this so that the rickrack would lay down towards the outside and if you don't do that you're going to be having a mess okay and then with, do the same thing with your lining when you sew the side pieces onto the lining center piece snip those two and then iron it nice and flat and it'll lay down and you'll have a beautiful bodice finished sewing the uh, rickrack into the back seams here and into the front seam. So now I'm going to uh, sew the shoulder seams on. So you lay them right on top of each other, matching notches, and pin it in place, and pin it in place here. And while I'm at it, I also did the lining. Here's the lining. I did the exact same thing with the lining. And you measure to make sure you've got it exactly the same. And I'm using one half inch seam allowance in all my seams here today. Well, that was fun. We got the back of the dirndl done. So join me next time for part four where we put the back of the dirndl together with the front and then we add the lining and then we finish off the armholes and the neckline with double fold bias tape and it's going to start really looking like a dirndl.